Okay, um, just a video, a quick video here, um, following up again with the book two, the Beyond the Known trilogy um, by Paul Selig. It is called Alchemy. Sorry about that. Puppy just moved the whole table and with it everything else. So please bear with me just a second. Okay. All right. So as I was reading this, excuse me one second. Okay, thank you. As I was reading this text, um, some messages came through. I will just read what was given to me. Once it is understood that you are not separate from source, it is impossible to see yourself separate from another. Was this teaching of separation purposeful uh, with malicious intent? This was my question. The answer I got was no, it was a natural side effect of the contrast of the vibrational field of this human collective experience. The teachings which followed were accepted and understood in alignment to that level of frequency. So I'm just going to interject there for a minute regarding that. So as I, as I understood it, as I was taking the message down, um, when they say the teachings which followed, they were talking about um, this the the way the human mind perceives information based on the frequency where it's operating so you know um if if you have a mind that is operating in a higher frequency state of love for example the information and messages that are received will be received in a vibrational accord with love and understood in that frequency so in an energy closer to love um, if a message is received into a mind that's energetic frequency is not not necessarily always but dipping into a lower frequency vibration the information is translated in a way that is of a less seemingly less loving nature okay so you know i have other videos that speak about the lenses our human lenses through which all of our understanding and perception comes okay so experientially I'm, i don't want to go into all of that please see a different video and i can't even tell you what it's called but I speak about um, our human lenses and how they come to be through experience. Okay, so reading on, the message continued. Even the teachings of Jesus some 2,000 years ago are just now beginning to be understood. The frequency of vibration of the human collective has reached a level of clarity, allowing more truth to permeate the field. Okay, so that that was that portion um and that may have been received yesterday this was received today okay so going back because this is an ongoing an ongoing process of my mind god is all things at the highest level when you see war okay i'm sorry i'm getting a correction god is all things at the highest level period. When you see war and conflict, you see the choice to deny God. You are seeing the misguided actions of those who have not yet claimed their true form as the divine aspect of God on earth. The divine is of form to the extent that one chooses to allow it. Free will means you can deny the truth as long as you wish, but you can't make your illusion real. 
You are all divine playing at being human, playing in a world or experience of a specific form of limitation that you believe is reality. The truth remains the truth, though you may choose to deny it. Okay. So, all right. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to interject here and go back to the divine is of form to the extent that one chooses to allow it. In other videos, um, I can't even tell you, maybe even two years ago, I don't even know. I spoke about um, this cord, this connection from the Missy to the higher self, or, you know, some will look at that as the soul, whatever you want to call it, and how we have a cord or, or a, a tube or a channel. And as we mm, grow, as, as we grow spiritually, uh, spiritually, that's just a word, please understand. As we grow and connect more, I could say connect more with the divine aspect of ourselves, the cord becomes larger, so in diameter in a sense, allowing more of the divine aspect to live through the vessel in form. So when this, when they said the divine is of form to the extent that one chooses to allow it, this is what I'm seeing. My understanding is that it is the more we remember, truly, the more we remember our divinity and connect with that aspect of us instead of the small self-identity given to us by the world and everything around us seemingly okay that we have believed we are that is not true so that's just a tiny little piece right and the tiny little piece is that part of us that is without all of the projections of everyone else and our false understandings um so the more we align or the more we connect to the divine self that is our truth the more the divine lives through the form manifested form okay okay i will go on all right i've said this before so okay so i'll begin now God gives all things and is all and every potential that ever was and ever could be. At the higher octaves, the energies of fear that masquerade as any number of forms does not express. It is still of God as all things are. It remains in the field of potential, though it does not manifest because it is not expressed. At the high octaves, love is the expression of the subsequent manifestation. Love and fear are both of God and at the higher octaves of manifestation, form, experience. The expression is love and so the sight is of loving vision, of abundance, of loving action. It is as if fear does not exist because at this level it does not become. Fear must first be expressed, and in parentheses it says called into being, to then translate into a manifestation which can be experienced. Okay, and, and just in closing here, I'm going to quote from Alchemy, the book. And this is a quote that, you know, is so profound and so simple. But the quote is this. To deny the presence of the divine in anyone is to exclude yourself from it. End quote. So that is... That is, you know, 
pretty amazing and absolutely true. So I'm just making little colored notes here. Okay, is there anything I need to touch on back here? Uh, okay, so in a, in a previous video, um, I explained that they had given me a vision of rainbows on paper, and these rainbows corresponded to frequencies of vibration, experiential frequencies of vibration, because, you know, the the conflict in saying God is all things when our human eyes perceive things that we think are, are you know, what some would call evil uh, or um, anything but love, right? Um, how challenging that is for, for us to wrap our minds around because I know God is all things. There is nothing outside of God. It, it can't be so. All things occur within God. So, so, you know, this is an ongoing teaching for me, particularly. Uh, much of this text is touching on uh, trace elements still within me of the, the shadow aspects that are being uncovered, that are being brought to light. Um, I... I wanted to say that in the beginning, and I, I will say it now. Um, again, I cannot express in words how grateful I am for this body of work that Paul Selig has allowed to come through. Um, I'm going to try not to cry. It is so beautiful. Uh, it is so beautiful. It is so true. It is, it is such... I can't encourage it enough. I can't. I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, so if you're if you find this video, that might be something for you. Um, probably, probably is. Is there anything more I need to touch on here? Um, I love this part where they say it is as if fear does not exist because at this level it does not become. Um, so when they showed me, when they showed me the rainbows and they, um, I was like, how do I express this, what I'm seeing? Like, how do I express this to an audience of others that they can see what I'm seeing and they instructed me on how to do that in one of the other videos that is there um, but what I understand is that because everything is in God God is the absolute potential in in this reference okay in this in this way God is the absolute potential of anything and that was in here I believe anything that could ever be, would ever be, had a, has ever been, on and on and on. And depending on where we are aligning in our own energetic frequency, we will call to ourselves the experiences within that frequency to grow. Uh, why? Why do I say that, to grow? Um... What I'm hearing right now and what I'm receiving right now is you can't not grow. You don't necessarily, in human form, you're not conscious of your growth, but you don't even have to try. It, it, it is part of the human experience. It, it's like if you, if, if your divinity chose to, and, and, send an aspect of itself to incarnate in this experience. It has been done for some kind of growth, for some kind of gain. We may not know what that is, but because that is so, we can't not grow. It's, it's you know, some things that the soul is choosing. There, the soul is the one who is really in control of all of this. 
Um, the soul is the one who's, who allows an incarnation to occur and even agrees to that. The soul is the one who calls the aspect home, in a sense. I'm using kind of Christian terms here. Calls the aspect home when there's nothing more to gain or glean from the experience. Um, so, you know, when we are born and when we when when the body dies or when we leave the body that's that has nothing to do with the missy right here it, it's my higher self it's my divinity my divine self that is in control of all of that um so the more i align with my divine self the less resistance i have to it <laughs> because you know resistance is what causes suffering actually um, through acceptance, and I mean holy acceptance in both W-H-O-L-L-Y and H-O-L-Y, um, holy acceptance is true happiness because we, the small self, our, our identity in, in human terms, likes to believe that it's in control, likes to believe that it's accomplishing something, likes to believe that it has has purpose in a in a greater way than it does. Not not to be judgmental, but the small self has a purpose. The small self has a purpose in the fact that it allows us through those <laughs> through those characteristics, personality traits through those quirks, let's say, it allows for the divine self to have the experience that it wants. So it is important. It's just not the be all and end all. You know, it's, it, there is something even, even more of which the small self is a small part. Okay, but this small self would want to believe that it is the whole. It is not. It is a por a portion, a small part of the whole. So as each one of us are a small part of the whole, we are one. Okay, so sorry I digress. Um, but I love that part where they say it doesn't become. I think that's great. And then um, once this message came, uh, as synchronicity would, synchronicity would have it, I continued reading, and there was more that it mentioned about become, and then it used the, and then they used that word in that kind of way, and I was like, okay, because because I even you know when I'm receiving these messages, I question it too. I I am not certainly nowhere near the point where. I don't question what what I'm writing. Okay, I it will it will be wonderful the day I get to that point where I don't question it anymore. But and that day has yet to come for me. <laughs> so you know I question it. So when I see synchronicities like that, after I take down a message like this and I continue to read a book that I have never read before, and then I see the words coming out that are very similar to what I've written, you know, just moments before, I'm like, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting validation that I'm hearing correctly. And I did get some kind of indication that I used, I had a, gr a grammar error in here somewhere, so please forgive me. Um, I had a grammar error in here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. So back to this. Sorry. Yes, I did digress and lost my train of thought completely. So as back to the rainbow analogy again and visual. So you have the le levels of the rainbows and one rainbow on top of another rainbow on top of another rainbow. And as you go up, the rainbows become lighter in color. Um, and the colors are more see-through and the less color there is the less dense the field um, the less density in the field which means 
the less low vibration experiences are available to us. Okay. So fear is a low vibration. You know, that's even, even the day will come when we won't even explain low vibration, high vibration, but fear seems to be the opposite of love. Okay. So if love is on one side of the pH scale or the spectrum, then fear is on the other side and both are contained within God. So that there's your polarity, your duality, right? So as we ascend and we ascend to the frequencies where there is less fear energy present, in manifestation there's less opportunity to have fearful experiences and as they state in this message um, it's as if fear does not exist because it only exists within the potential the potentiality that all that God is the potential for all things so fear is there in a potential but has not been called into manifestation right so there will be fewer and fewer experiences available for calling that, for having those fearful experiences because there will be less and less of us calling it into being, okay? Less of us aligning to that energy. So um, I was given, I was also given uh, a message while I was putting dishes away. So again, you know, don't, don't underestimate the work that you do. Um, messages can come through anytime. I was putting dishes away, clean dishes away. And so I have to go back to that. Yeah. Silverware in the silverware drawer and information came in that said, this is why, this is why fear, it, fear has no purpose if you can learn in another way and this is why because the experience you're going to have is the experience you're going to have that's the experience your soul deems you need the soul wants for whatever reason okay i'm going to change that because we don't need it we need nothing we are perfect in our divine form we are perfect in our divinity so let's say let's say we're going to have the experience that the soul wants to have now the soul will call into being whatever experience is necessary to grow the connection between the human aspect and the one that's calling from the higher realms. So if, if the experience is something that, that the Missy says, oh, that's unpleasant. I, I really don't like that. I must be aware enough to know that my divine self, who I am in truth, has called the experience into being because that's where I have been. This human aspect is that's where I'm vibrating. That's the frequency I'm holding. And it has called that into being so that I can use it to ascend, to elevate to a higher level. Or, you know, these are all words meant to point in a direction and you might understand it if I use different words. Um, to, to, Whatever the experience is, the intent of the experience is always to grow the connection between the human aspect and the divine self. 
because it is the divine self that wants to live through the human form. It is the divine self that wants to walk the earth plane. It is the divine self that wants to have that experience. It is the divine self that is to be known here. So there was that. In peace and love, may you be blessed.